Hello, I'm Annabel Brody smith Communications Director of the Association of Investment Companies. Today, we're taking a look at Japan, and with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe announcing a general election for October, it's a topical time to be looking at the sector. Japan is a country where we have some very strong performing investment companies. And despite the Japanese market having a tough time historically, prospects for the world's third largest economy are looking up. Today, I'm joined by Praveen Kumar, manager of Bailey Gifford Shin Nippon in the Japanese smaller company sector. Nicholas Price, manager of Fidelity Japanese Values, also from the Japanese smaller company sector. And Andrew Rose, manager of Schroeder Japan Growth in the Japan sector. Right, Praveen, I'd like to ask you, what is your investment strategy? So we are a fundamental bottom-up uh, stock picker. Um, within that, for uh, the small cap side of things, we focus a lot on companies that um, are developing a disruptive business model, uh, mostly through the use of uh, online as a channel for disruption. Um, and a lot of these companies also tend to be run by young, dynamic founders who uh, are quite entrepreneurial in nature. In quite a few cases, these tend to be Western educated, so they don't come uh, with the baggage of uh, you know jobs for life sort of culture. So our emphasis remains on trying to identify these companies where we can generate a multiple of our clients' money over a five to ten year period. Wow, they sound like exciting, dynamic companies. Nick, what's your investment strategy? My investment strategy is very much uh, Fidelity's traditional bottom-up approach. And I work with a team of analysts of about 16 analysts in Tokyo. And also we exchange ideas across the globe with our offices in Hong Kong and also um, with London as well. I very much focus on finding undiscovered growth. And so I do on the ground around about 350 company visits a year. And I'm really very much looking for companies with a three to five year growth runway. Uh, with ROEs, go, ROEs or return on equity going north of uh, 10% and also where there's a strong management team with, which are orientated towards shareholders. Right, and Andrew, what's your strategy? Well, I mean, for me, the keys are in-house research, first off. Uh, I'm based here in London, but I rely a lot on the analyst team in Tokyo. So in-house research, um, being long-term is also a key. We want to look at the time period that others are not looking at by and large. Um, and also being valuation sensitive, so we won't buy a stock unless we can justify the valuation. Uh, so the idea is to generate a mainstream portfolio which should outperform over a long period of time by 2 or 3% per annum. Right, now Japan's economy has recently had a turnaround with six consecutive quarters of positive growth. Mm. Why is this and will it continue, Andrew? Six, you're right, six consecutive quarters, I mean, that's actually the first time in 12 years that that's been achieved. Wow, um, quite so an achievement. It is, then. yeah. I mean, it, certainly key, one key is it's been a fairly favourable global backdrop. Uh, Japan does need that. But in addition to that, there's been um, some consumer growth as well. Um, confidence has improved as the labour market has tightened. There's been some income growth. And you've had a supportive policy uh, environment. So um, those are the main reasons, I think. Uh, and there's no particular reason why that should change in the short term. Right, Nick. Do you agree with that? Yes, I, yeah, I would broadly agree. I think uh, one of the factors has been consumption and also um, capital investment. And the consumption side, we've definitely seen um, improving total employment income in the, uh, in the economy, which has helped drive consumption. And additionally, also on the CapEx side, we have a very acute labour shortage and companies are starting to invest quite heavily in labour saving devices, etc. like that, which is also driving the economy. And I would expect that to continue for in the next six months or so. Right. And Praveen, what's your views on the economic outlook? I think it's interesting to see that the end demands and the end markets for a lot of these Japanese companies, especially the exporters, have held up quite well. Uh, and demand for a range of uh, goods and services remains quite robust. And um, along with some of the reasons that Andrew and uh, Nicholas mentioned, I think there is also a structural tailwind in the form of trends such as robotics and you know increased automation across a number of sectors. So for instance, if you see the situation in China where wage uh, wages have generally been on an increasing trend, um, there is an incentive to try and introduce automation to uh, try and um, you know reduce some of the impact from increased um, wages. Uh, so I th that, I think, is a long-term structural tailwind which should benefit a whole host of uh, manufacturing companies within Japan. Well, that's interesting, because the next question I'm going to ask you is where are you finding opportunities? So it'd be interesting if any of those trends are coming through where you're finding opportunities. 
Sure. So uh, let me split that into sort of overseas focus companies and the more domestic focus companies. So in, in within the former, again, uh, robotics has always been a very strong uh, theme for us. We uh, across the firm, uh, not just in the small cap funds, we have quite a lot of investments in uh, companies that play to that theme. And within the smaller companies uh, fund, uh, we do own quite a few stocks that um, have carved out a niche within the whole sort of robotic supply chain and have already established themselves as um, the de facto number one player. So we are on the lookout for similar companies that have the ability to carve out niches within these growing uh, areas and to dominate that niche. In the latter uh, camp uh, where uh, we're looking at uh, some of the more really rapid growth businesses uh, either disrupting uh, domestic sectors or creating some entirely new business models and um, we are seeing quite a few companies come up with um, really innovative um, business ideas. Uh, so within that online disruption that remains one of our favorite themes and you know we continue to find ideas that fit that theme. Yeah very exciting. Nick where are you finding opportunities? Yes, well, I think in particular in the Japanese sort of mid and small cap area of the market, we find compared with um, London, compared with, the, for example, uh, the US market and the, and the UK market, there's probably about half the number of analysts who are actually looking at the stocks. And almost half of the mid and small cap stocks are actually not covered at all by uh, analysts. So there's a large opportunity there for us to be uh, with our team on the ground to find new ideas. And that's where I, where I spend most of my, my, most of my time. Um, in particular, I would, uh, as we suggested, I think uh, e e-commerce, um, internet, and uh, some of the disruptive companies um, in recruitment as well are also interesting areas of the market. And also, um, as, as alluded to also, the uh, factory automation side, we have a very tight uh, domestic um, labor shortage. And also, there's a quite a lot of um, innovative companies in Japan who are really expanding their business models and going global um, in, that, in that sort of factory automation solution segment. So those are sort of two areas I would highlight. Andrew, mm. where are you finding opportunities? I think if you look at Japan this year, in a very broad sense, it, the markets tended to favor um, sort of defensive growth parts of the market and things which are cyclical financial have been ignored. And as a contrarian, uh, I'm therefore finding more opportunities in the parts that have been ignored. So some of the cyclical areas, machinery, autos, some of the financials like uh, insurance. Um, and also in the domestic economy, one of the worst performing areas has been property companies. I think there's some interesting opportunities there given the valuations on offer. Now, what are the risks for the Japanese market and how are you positioned for them? I'm going to start with Mick on that question. I think sort of looking out, uh, putting aside perhaps North, North Korea is a very short term uh, risk. I think looking out um, perhaps six months down the line, I think one of the key things that the investors will be looking at with this current election is to see that, uh, is Mr. Abe you know, returned with a, a decent majority or not. Um, and I think the, the, perhaps the key risk that people are looking at is the, uh, the Bank of Japan, uh, the Kuroda, the governor, will um, be re is, is due to be reappointed next April. And I think investors will look at um, the, the support for Abe and um, will be a little bit concerned if he loses a lot of support um, because investors are very much re counting on that reappointment for you know, stability in, in, in macroeconomic policy and for the currency. Angie, how about the risk for you? I mean, I, I agree with all of that. Um, if, uh, maybe I could add one, which is maybe slightly longer term, which is that there is a plan to increase the VAT uh, from 8 to 10% um, in 2019. And I say that's a risk because every time in the past when Japan's either uh, started a VAT or increased it, it's caused the economy to go into recession. So if we're thinking slightly longer term, I'd, I'd highlight that as a possible Yeah, I one. can understand mm. that. And Praveen, what are, you, what are the risks for you? So we take a slightly different approach to uh, thinking about risk uh, in terms of the holdings of a portfolio because we are a fundamental bottom-up high growth stock picking team. For us, risk is more on uh, in terms of uh, risks to the business and risks to our investment case. So that may come in the form of you know heightened competition or price wars. Yes, there are external factors that might you know temporarily affect demand, but you know we are investing over a five plus year time frame and over such long periods of time generally things sort of come out in the wash so for us the biggest risk is you know if our original investment case uh, is damaged either you know through due to a number of factors and, and that's something that we focus a lot on in terms of an analysis so yes there are potential external shocks but again you know we're taking a very long term view here and uh, we, we certainly we believe that um, it's, it's the business risk that we should be focusing on. So Andrew looking at your outlook for Japan and mm. obviously we've mentioned the recent events in North Korea we've got a snap general election what's your output for Japan what do you think? 
I mean, there are risks, that we, as we've all just mentioned, but I think broadly it's pr pretty good. If you look at the economy, that's on a sound footing, as we've just uh, mentioned. Um, the policy backdrop is pretty supportive. Um, politics probably is supportive. Obviously, there's an election coming up, and time will tell. Um, valuation, I think, Japan stacks up well in a relative sense compared to other markets. The trends in corporate governance also appear supportive. Um, so for those sort of key reasons, I think the outlook um, is, is a pretty promising one. Right. Praveen, I know you're positive and you're taking a very long-term view of the companies you invest in, but how about your outlook for Japan considering all these recent events? I think, to be brutally honest with you, I think most developed economies across sort of, uh, you know, the US, uh, you know, across Europe would actually give an arm and a leg to be in the situation that Japan is in. You have, you know, an economy that's the world's third largest, you have pretty high standards of living, you have incredibly long, um, you know, life expectancy ratios, um, and generally a very wealthy, harmonious society. Um, and also in terms of, you know, um, the domestic sort of economy, uh, as has been pointed out, we've had, you know, a series of uh, positive GDP uh, readings that's been sort of the longest for a very long time. And, you know, there are a number of underlying trends that are playing out, whether it's through labor shortage or deregulation across a number of sectors. So if you put all of this together, it seems to me that, you know, actually Japan is in quite a nice spot. And one final point I'd like to make is on immigration. Uh, it's quite funny when you look at you know what's been happening across the world where the rest of the world seems to be slowly moving into one direction. Japan is actually moving in the other direction. So you know with all this protectionist noise in the US and even in the UK, the Japanese government recently introduced a visa scheme that would give you a permanent residency in just one year. Um, and that's you know only for specific sectors. Now I I don't know of any country that gives you a permanent residency after just one year. Yeah. So that's one way in which they're trying to sort of work around the whole immigration problem. So I think when you put all of it together, you know, it, it, it's quite a good spot that Japan is in at the moment. Yes, and that will definitely be a positive boost for the economy. Definitely, yeah. Nick, yeah. what's your yeah. outlook? Yeah, I, I would broadly agree. I'm relatively positive on the uh, macro over the next uh, 12 months. I think um, the valuations of the market are quite compelling, so I think the stock market um, you know, deserves to be revalued up um, somewhat more. Um, I think in, the, in terms of the uh, longer term issues of Japan, we often hear about demographics being an issue and the reason not to own Japanese stocks. But I would just argue that the Japan is a very big economy and it's very, very deep. And there are a lot, there are a lot of um, opportunities for companies, especially in the mid-cap uh, mid, mid area, where they can grow for many, many years, five to ten years in that economy, um, before they become, you know, globally, you know, global companies. So there's a lot, there's a large runway of growth for a lot of, uh, for a lot of uh, mid and small cap companies, and I think it's a, it's a great sector to invest in. Right, I have to say that seems like a very positive outlook from all of you. I'd like to thank our managers very much for joining us today. It's interesting to hear these views on Japan, but I'd like to emphasise that we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Investment is for the long term, and you need to have a well-balanced portfolio. If you have any doubts, you should talk to a financial advisor. Thanks so much for watching.